everybody, and welcome to yet another episode of That 90s Spider-Man Show, where we go through all the wonderful things that can happen when you get radiation poisoning. I'm one of your co-hosts today, my name's Henry, and alongside me, if he were black, you'd get a lot more money for beating him in a casino. It's Jack! <laughs> forget that you're doing these yeah. every time I forget. I figure because this is the last one of the season, I might as well get out of the bag. Yeah, last one of the season. Well, last episode of the season, season anyway. Yeah, last episode of the season. Yeah, it's true. But yeah, what are you reading today, Jack? Since I last saw you, what have been reading? Oh, um, I've... Uh... The way, obviously, comics go when they're going for a long period of time, mm -hmm. like the Spider-Man ones have, is there's, like, peaks and, and troughs. troughs. Tr trough is bad, right? Troughs are the bad ones. That's yeah. why the animals eat, so you know that's bad. Yeah, because animals are bad. <laughs> <laughs> animals are terrible. Yeah. Unlike us, who eats on mountains. <laughs> Peaks of things. We yeah. get up really high. Yeah, right? yeah. Like the chair is that. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, there's peaks and troughs because they, you get different writers coming in. There's just good shit and a lot of bad shit. Yeah. And sometimes you go through a phase where you're like, fuck, I can't be asked to read this anymore. Yeah. I'm only doing this because I want to read every yeah. one of these comics, which is yeah. what I'm doing. It's like horse food content. It's like what? Horse food content. Oh, right. This is such a weird phrase. It's, it's going to catch on. Horse food content. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that when we got to the 80s, I had this association with the 80s and in Spider-Man that there wasn't really much going on mm -hmm. because most of the big storylines have already happened and you, there's just not much iconic stuff from that other yeah. than Venom, who you know I'm not crazy about. So I was just like, is this just more bullshit? And a lot of villains, which like people want to forget about are introduced oh, right. but oh, yeah. saying that I'm in this one phase and it's fucking great it's just really good it's oh. like actually some of the best which shit phase is that okay well one is that the black cat stuff there's lots of black cat there's lots of kingpin Ooh. I didn't realise that we spoke about kingpin last week but I didn't realise that he's in a lot of the Peter Parker the spectacular Spider-Man series okay. they kind of keep him in that and he doesn't go like, into the main, series. In the main series at all but and then there's the Hobgoblin stuff the Hobgoblin and stuff is some of the best shit I've ever read. Really? It's really fucking good. Because they, they just, they're teasing it out slowly over time and he goes away and he comes back. And there was this whole, one of the best issues I read, which was Hobgoblin, he's got all Norman Osborn's notes. So he's like blackmailing everyone because he knows everyone's secrets. Yeah. Which Norman Osborn is too crazy to do anything with. And he organises for them all to arrive and they all know he's, they've got someone on him. Like Harry Osborn's there. That's how he finds out that his dad was a goblin. Well, he he already knew, but then he went crazy. Okay. Is this then, right, after he became a goblin himself? Yeah. The Green Goblin stuff was a mental breakdown. Okay. But and he did that all like not knowing that his father was Green Goblin. He did at the time, but it was like this whole thing where he was having a mental breakdown. He was on LSD. He had like an like amnesia. Yeah. Say. And he went to therapy and then... At this point, maybe he knew he was Green Goblin and he knew that was part of this crazy thing. But then Peter Parker's like, I'm not going to tell anyone it was Norman Osborn because it would ruin Harry's life yeah. for everyone to know that. But then Harry Osborn finds out through Hobgoblin and he like confides in Peter and he has a huge breakdown over it because he's like, holy shit, my dad was not only a super villain, but he's murdered people. He killed your girlfriend. He yeah. killed my one of my closest friends, you know? And it's just like this horrible thing. But then, as well as that, he also finds out that uh, Hobgoblin also blackmails J. Jonah Jameson because no one knows, including Spider-Man, no one knows that he created the Scorpion. Oh, shit. That's still, like, under wraps. It has this great thing where Spider-Man finds out, but he's still like, don't worry, J.J., I'm going to protect your reputation, even though you don't like me. And then J.J.'s like, nah, I'm going to confess anyway. Spider-Man stops Hobgoblin and his... All his notes get blown up, so oh, he, no. he can't do it anymore. Me, but then Jay Jonah's like, I'm still going to confess anyway. And he goes front page and he steps down from the bugle. Oh, and then Robbie sad. Robertson gets his job. Oh, yeah. And, then, uh, and it's a really cool thing because it's like Jay Jonah and Jameson like, doing the right stepping thing. up and doing the right thing. And that whole, yeah. they, they're just interweaving all these arts. And there's also a really cool thing of like, Kingpin briefly appears, helps Spider Man. There's a point when Spider Man's like about to be killed by the hobgoblin and kingpin saves him just yeah. because he's like that hobgoblin guy he's 
I'm not. I'm not a fan. Yeah. Like he's gonna fuck with me at some point. Yeah. So I'd rather you be still alive to fuck him up. Yeah. I still need you to fuck. Like you up. you're like hobgoblin's more likely to fuck me up than you are. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, you go fight him or whatever. And it's I know there's just like loads of little like and plot it's, things and, and it's really compelling. Yeah. There's cloak and dagger which we talked about before. Yeah. And then there's then there's silver mane. We won't go into that. Okay. Because that's the whole thing. That's a whole thing, is it? It might happen in this show. I don't know. So I don't, I don't want to say it. But, okay. but yeah, it's been really good. And that's like, a, um, I mean, like probably like 84 or something. I, I've only just caught up officially to him getting rid of the symbiote. Oh, nice. That's only just happened. Yeah. Uh, so we've got like a bit of Wilds of Venom, really. Yeah. I've probably got like another 25 issues or something. That's not bad at all. Yeah. And I've read those issues before, but it's better to have like a bit more context to yeah. them. I don't have to like rush through them for contacts and just drink it all in. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Fair enough. Oh, by the way, does Hobgoblin know that Peter's Spider Man then? No, but that's the thing is that he's got so much of these notes and he's still going through them all yeah. to try and find out all these secrets on people. And at one point, Hobgoblin even thinks. Could Peter be Spider Man? He knows from what went down and from some of the other notes, the Green Goblin implies that he knows who Spider Man is, but he doesn't say the name and yeah. he's like. If I keep going through these notes, I'm going to find, find it at some one. point. Yeah. But then during their fight, it like his base catches fire and he loses all his notes. And yeah. he's like, fuck, I, that, there was probably loads yeah. of shit in there I could have used. Yeah. Uh, and then they have a really cool fight and Green Goblin, uh, Hobgoblin, Hobgoblin gets like fucking blown up. Oh, shit. And then it's like, oh, he's dead. And then like he comes back. Because he's not dead. Yeah. But Hob- they really hype up Hobgoblin. He's yeah. like the main villain for like a long time. Really? Yeah. He's, and he's really good because I kind of thought he'd be okay yeah like he's kind of like the he kind of is like mocked as the afterthought yeah i can i can see why people are a fan it's hard to explain why it's kind of the similar thing of the how how we explained it in um the animated in in the animated series where it was just like without the crazy or like using crazy to scare people but Mm -hmm. like actually being a calculated criminal and like what if Green Goblin was super efficient yeah. and didn't just like have a vendetta. He wasn't a petty motherfucker. Yeah. But I think a lot of it is just down to like the art and the, the writing being just really good. Oh, fantastic. Uh, but anyway, yeah. Yeah, so that was um, the Hobbit Goblin. We covered him last week on that night Spider-Man show. And the week before. Yeah, we've had a lot of Hobbit Goblin. But today we're talking about Chameleon. Mm-hmm. Not the lizard, the actual villain. Because today is episode 13 of Spider-Man the Animated Series. And conversely, this 13th episode of That Nancy Spider-Man Show, they have the chameleon, where we'll be going through um, Kingpin. No, the chameleon. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's the day of the chameleon. chameleon. The final episode, episode of season one. one of Spider-Man Animated Series. Wow. We've gone through a whole season, folks. Bearing in mind, the first episode is called The Night of the Lizard. Mm-hmm. So they're doing, it's almost like a mirror thing. Yeah. Like, uh, we've gone through like, the night and we went to the day. Yeah. Wow. So yeah, what would be like the twilight or like the first light? Or do, do, would it be like fucking Venom, I guess? Dawn of Venom. Dawn of Big Wheel. <laughs> <laughs> but no, yeah, we're at episode 13. And episode 13 is an interesting one, to say the least. So we... we Fast paced as fuck. Yeah, it is not a slow episode. There's, there's a lot mm. that happens. It's like the whole... It's a plot of a movie. It yeah. happens in like... 20 minutes. Yeah. Like, you check your watch, and you're like, holy shit, how's it been 11 and a half minutes? We've gone through, like, <laughs> two-thirds of a plot. Yeah. It's insane. So, to start off this roller coaster ride of fun, we're at an airport. The funnest place of all. We have a group of people converging on what seems to be a man going through um, customs. They hold him at gunpoint, which is not really what you want when you're at JFK or whatever. He kind of presses a button, the man who's been, like, oh, held at gunpoint, yeah. and a fucking, like, smoke pellet comes, like, out. Well, it's like a... The case turns into a gun. Yeah. And he, like, shoots a bomb, ga- a gas bomb. But it's, it's that kind of gas bomb where it's, it kind of just looks like a bomb. It looks like a fucking rocket. Yeah. It gets pretty intense pretty quickly. It's, like, the first 15 seconds of the episode. It's insane. Yeah. And, like, you can tell this was made, like, before in the 90s because you couldn't carry that shit in today. Yeah. You couldn't, like, smuggle a fucking rocket launcher in a briefcase today. This is insane. So, um, yeah, smoke bombs. And he runs away. And the man we've seen, he kind of walks past the pilot, and as he walks past the pilot, the pilot looks back at him, and it's like looking into a mirror. <laughs> and the pilot's like, what the fuck is going on? And then, like, he kind of goes like, yeah, fuck you, motherfucker, and kind of runs into the helicopter where he was coming from. And wouldn't you know it, it's a, um, a J3 helicopter. 
known from episode four, episodes maybe seven and episode nine. It's J. G. Jameson's helicopter. And he goes into the cockpit and he's like, get out, co-pilot. And the co-pilot's from episode six. Oh, right, shit, sure, yeah. <laughs> the guy who had, like, a family to feed. So he's he's not on this flight. And it's a good thing, too, because he would have fucking died. Yeah. Anyway, he walks into the, the helicopter and he flies away. It's, it's a whole thing. And he's pursued by, like, the people who are um, pursuing him out. They kind of follow him on, like, a helicopter chase. But then, like, the guy flying the JP helicopter just fucks up. He just crashes into a building, effectively. Yeah. It, like, embeds yeah. in the building. It crashes into the... Yeah, it kind of, like, gets, like, stuck a bit. Spider-Man swings into the scene because he's, like, doing his thing. And he kind of goes into the cockpit and saves this guy and listens to the ground. And, like, everyone was cheering, yay, Spider-Man! At which point the helicopter explodes. Yeah. And it's, yeah, it's a big and, explosion. And during all this, like, comedian just uses this commotion to just, like, like it. Yeah, he gets the fuck out. Do you want to know something interesting about this? Yeah. This uh, a helicopter flying into a skyscraper and blowing up. Oh, yeah. This is not in reruns. Really? Yeah. Po- I wonder why. Yeah, for some reason, post-2001, they decided not to include this bit. It must be that Strokes album that came out that time. Yeah, 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 that was a... Are you specifically using the Strokes for the reason I f- think you are? They like they kind of cut one of their songs off the first album because but it contains the lyrics, New York City cops aren't too smart. Which is, oh, right. in retrospect, unfortunate. Yeah. So, the helicopter explodes. And the window things you kind of see earlier in the scene kind of get, like, fucked up. They're kind of hanging by threads. Spider-Man has to go back and save those guys as well. And then, like, he saves them. There's all these cheers. Everyone's like, yay, Spider-Man! And as he's, like, drinking all the praise, like, he kind of realises the guy he saved initially was running away. And then he goes to like, go, like, hey, stop, guy! But then the helicopter explodes again for some reason. So he has to go back and save everyone else, and he escapes. And now cut to the bugle, where Peter Parker is on cocaine. He's, he's pretty energetic. He's fucking energetic as hell. He kind of just, like, following around, like, JJ, JJ! He's, like, looking for JJ. And he kind of tracks him down, he's like, get me on this peace treaty, man. And JJ and Jameson is like, no, you're a college student, this is a UN event. Yeah. And then Peter's, like, following him around, like, the building as he goes out. He kind of, like, sinks to an elevator as he closes. Yeah. And there's just lots of energy. He's, like, really excited about it. And finally, like, a parent, like, being worn down by their child, he's like, fine. You've got until my tailoring. And he gets into his limo. And he kind of, like, goes, like, well, this and this and this. JJ kind of relents. And he's like, fine. I'll consider you for this and that. As he's driving away, we kind of see JJ. Again. Oh, What's right. Yeah, of about? course. Yeah. I forgot about this. Yeah. What's that all about? With, with the signature, as we see throughout this whole episode, you can tell when it's an impersonation of someone by the chameleon's smug grin. He's because constantly if, smug grin. If someone gives a smug grin, then they're the chameleon. Yeah. <laughs> Just anybody. If it's like yeah. a ten year old boy, you know yeah, that's the fucking chameleon right there. JJ's like standing on like the doorsteps with a smug grin. But we cut back to the limo and throughout the conversation JJ has with Peter, the driver's kinda of like looking in like very suspiciously. And they realise they've gone in the completely wrong direction. They've gone into a random alleyway. And JJ's like, what the fuck are you doing? And that's when the show just... Loses its goddamn mind. This is yeah. where the drugs kick in. Yeah, this is... It goes... Yeah. It just goes to 11 straight away. Just, like, slams down the accelerator and we're, like, hit into hyper speed. It's yeah. insane. I mean, almost literally. Yeah. Because this whole this limousine... Almost, like, not even in frame. Just transforms into a spaceship. Yeah, and just fucking flies off. And just flies off into the sky. Yeah. Obviously, JJ's like pissed off but Peter's like well let's see what's about to shake yeah, down yeah it's just like Chewie's just like let's see where this goes <laughs> yeah fuck it why not <laughs> this could be fun I'm not a man to say no to a new situation <laughs> gotta try everything once yeah <laughs> you know they're like chained up in this yeah, back of this, this car. car so they kind of fly in and Peter's just chucked unceremoniously into a giant cell but being Spider-Man he kind of like fucking figures it out he's crawling over the walls heads into a vent he goes through one of the vents and almost falls to his death. Yeah, it's like a proper Empire Strikes Back, yeah. like hanging out at the bottom of Cloud City. Yeah. Like, why the fuck am I miles yeah. in here? Yeah, he's like, oh my god, I'm gonna die here. And he kind of like climbs back up and he climbs to safety and he heads to, to another vent. And this is where he notices JJ, who has been taken to another place. And this is when he meets Nick Fury. Yeah. Yeah. This yeah. isn't, you know... This your... isn't, isn't your, like, son's neck fury, is your, <laughs> your dad's yeah. neck fury. <laughs> yeah, it's the opposite, right? Yeah. Because uh, this Nick Fury is young and... Uh, does he even have, like, the signature, like, um, Silver Fox thing, does he? Yeah, because uh, for those who 
don't know, like growing up on the uh, MCU shit, Nick Fury was always like white in the comics. Yeah. And with brown hair with like white streaks, yeah. like Reed Richards, yeah. Mr. Fantastic, like white streaks for his hair. And there's still the eye patch and everything, but it was actually Nick Fury was switched around to be black in the ultimate like line of comics. Yeah. Uh, where I think it was Brian Hitch, like an artist for the Ultimates, just drew his version of uh, Nick Fury and based it off Samuel L. Jackson. Yeah, from there. Yeah, and then and then when they came around to casting the Avengers, or not Avengers, but the cameo in mm-hmm. Iron Man, they just they just went to Samuel L. Jackson, which was a which was a cool yeah. detail. This is way before that, so we this is like ten years before Ultimates, so obviously it wasn't voiced by Samuel L. Jackson, but that would have been hilarious. Yeah, that would have been weird. But, you know, I mean, luckily, <laughs> this uh, we, we may have a white character instead of a black character, but we've also got a, a white character who can be black characters as yeah. well. So there's a lot of so, race swapping. Yeah, there's a lot episode. of race swapping, yeah. Some black washing going on. Yeah, a lot of, you know, we're going back in time. Yeah. A lot of cultural appropriation with the chameleon. <laughs> But yeah, this Nick Fury is, yeah. uh, he's, he's not even, it's not even just like he's the uh, OG Nick Fury, but he's also like super young. Yeah. He doesn't, he doesn't have those white streaks, right? No, this, he's but, like completely brown in this. Yeah, but then, well, in some ways. <laughs> <laughs> brown hair, I meant brown hair. <laughs> but he... <laughs> but, he's not in blackface but, during but, any while. But yeah. Nick Fury has always been a bit like older and haggard and like he's yeah. a war hero, so he's a bit rough around the edges. And this guy's like fresh face. He just like, he's like 19 years old. Yeah. He's super young. He's like, he's on like his internship between like years of his course. Yeah. And his national relations is insane. But he's introducing this and he's like in a flying chair. Yeah. He's like got like an Alistair Smythe. The same, whoever like Alistair Smythe got his chair from, they've got the same guy. What is, he's got the upgraded version yeah. because Alistair Smythe uses hover chair oh, yeah. technology to just move at the pace of a wheelchair. Yeah. You know, just going forward and backwards and side to side like he's on an isometric video game. But, <laughs> like whereas, Space Invaders or something. Yeah, whereas like, <laughs> whereas Nick Fury, you know, he's like Mario 64. He's yeah. like fucking like going in all fucking dimensions. Yeah. For no reason as well. He just keeps flying around the room while he talks. I mean, like, if I had a flying chair, I'd be doing that all the fucking time. Yeah. If this chair I'm sitting on would fly, I'd be all over the place. He'd get like vertigo looking at me. Yeah, he's kind of like a, he's kind of like mini me with the <laughs> extending chair in uh, Austin Powers just going like up and down. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, it's ridiculous. It's fucking great. But he he's there to like fill in JJ on, on the, what's going on. Yeah, like yo, I'm Nick Fury. Yeah. You're in Shield. Yeah. This is a thing. Fury is like presumed to be dead, apparently. Oh yeah, yeah. Unless and he's like he was yeah. a war hero yeah. who who got killed, and JJ's like, wait, you're not meant to be alive. And yeah, and then he's like, well, you fucked up my obituary, you piece of shit. And it kind of shows his obituary and the pictures are roaming around because JJ's a cheap fucker. Yeah. He's going to pay for getting images. Yeah, so he's got the eye patch on the wrong side. So yeah, he explains that there's a guy called the Comedian on the Loose. And this dude, um, for lack of a better word, fucks shit up. He explains he's gone all around the world doing these terrorist attacks and he's heading for the UN diplomat meeting that Peter's been really fucking horny about. Yeah, and luckily they've got video surveillance mm-hmm. footage of, of yeah. him pointing at a map yeah. with a group of vague terrorists yeah. just saying like let's do terrorist yeah. things look all the terrorism we're about to do and JJ's like why the fuck are you looking at me when you have the footage of it and Fury's like be cool if he succeeds in fucking up these diplomats plan war's gonna break out and that's gonna be bad for everybody so yeah Fury kind of gives like J3 like a little like label thing on his label he says press this and shit's about to go down and JJ's like I got this now let's go pick up your worker. And Peter's like eavesdropping this entire time, and says, "Oh shit, I've got to go back." Yeah. And then they're flying down, and then they kind of. And <laughs> like, Peter's still chewing again. Yeah. Like, oh, what was all that about? about? And J. 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 Henderson is just like, um, "It's national security. I can't tell you." Being uncharacteristically non-bombastic is weird. Yeah. They kind of head back to the bugle, and this is when the body switching shenanigans begins in earnest. Yeah, I almost feel like. Going through the recap of this bit is just going to be... It's going to be confusing It's going to be confusing. I, I mean, I wasn't doing recap notes or anything for this, but I, I was looking at notes for other stuff that we'll talk about later, and I was like, I don't even know how to write this down. <laughs> uh, it's so insane. Yeah, because the way he's transforming in this, he's got like a... A little belt, which kind of... And he, like, he almost like takes a photo of someone, and then once he's got that, 
Yeah. Then he can like transform into yeah. them whenever he wants. It's called crotch cam. It's really kind of really weird. Yeah. So he's showing up his crotch cam, and he's kind of got like pictures of everyone at the beagle. He's kind of flipping through them, taking pictures of the crotch. And the, from yeah. the back, it kind of does, it looks kind of weird from the back because he's got, got like his hands like down his weight, like down his crotch, and it looks like he's like working off to all of his like employee photos, which as a CEO, I guess is his like one. But he kind of takes pictures of himself. Well, J. Jonah Jameson. Peter Parker, Robbie Robertson, and a woman called Glory Grant. Yeah, I was interested about this. I completely did not think she was in the show. Because no. the whole thing is, you got Betty Brandt was yeah. uh, was JJ's secretary mm-hmm. in the comics, and that's how Peter met her and became his first girlfriend. Yeah. For those who don't know, we yeah. talked about this in Far From Home yeah. cast, but... Spoilers for a 65-year-old comic. She was always the secretary. She eventually leaves. Glory Grant is... It was way later, like in the late seventies, I believe. She's Peter Parker's new neighbor, oh, and okay. then he's friends with her for like years and years. And then at one point, she needs a job, and he's like, "Well, there's a space going." JJ keeps going through secretaries because he's just a piece of shit, and no one wants to work with him. People yeah. keeps quitting like every single week. <laughs> uh, but then Glory Grant goes in for her interview, and she comes out, and JJ is smitten, and he's like, "She's the best. She's I this. love her. You're hired." And wow. she's like, she's like well, she, I think she's like the only one who can take his bullshit. Yeah. You know, she's strong enough willed. She's a no-nonsense black woman. Yeah, yeah. basically. And I, I was interested that they brought her in. Yeah, because I thought like, maybe they'd do the Betty Brown and just go to the, the original comics or something. But she should not have been the uh, show yet, Betty Brown. Um, I don't recall. I don't remember her. No. I, I only, this is the first thing I remember of there being a secretary. Um, yeah. Going through J3's day to day is something we've already I, gone through. I'm we? not sure where Glory is in the nineties. So maybe it's just a case of in the ni- in like nineteen ninety four, Glory Grant was working for Jameson, so they yeah, just they just went with what was happening. And mm-hmm. as with like having loads of hobgoblin stuff because hobgoblin was around, maybe. Yeah. So it's probably fresher than mine, I guess. Yeah. But anyway. Mm-hmm. Fair enough. She comes in. And she kinda of asks JJ as how the how the fitting went, but as obviously not JJ, it's the comedian, so he's like where are the files? And she explains to him, I gave you the files half an hour ago. And then he's like, no, give me the files now. I want them now. And then I, come, I was kind of wondering, like, does J. Jonah Jameson treat his stuff better or worse? Is this, like, out of character for him? Like, does he treat his stuff better than this usually or worse than this? Because she's kind of like, whatever. I like, guess, he's used to this kind of bullshit. He, he's the one character, like, it, like in, in all these, like, impersonating, like, situations yeah. you get in fiction or whatever, there's yeah. always the threat of, like, oh, they're going to fuck up that person's personal yeah. life. Whereas I feel like JJ is, like, immune. Yeah. Because it's just, like, if the comedian comes in and acts like a dick, makes some orders, yeah. everyone's going to be, like, classic JJ. Yeah. They'd be like, he's not out riding abuse today. He must be in a good mood, you know? What was that all about? National security bugger can't discuss it. So there's this point where JJ and Pierre returns to the Bugle. And Peter's spider sense kind of goes off as he walks past Robbie. So Grant hands um, Jay the files, and, and JJ's like, what the fuck are these? I already have these. They're in my briefcase. And, and then Grant's like, I know. And then she storms off, and she's going to write like a review on Glassdoor, you just know. She's yeah. like, yeah, fuck this dude. Didn't know people would approve of this CEO. Advice in management, be more respectful to your staff. It's a whole thing. And then there's going to be a whole... Our like... pilots keep blowing up. <laughs> We've gone through so many pilots in like three months. Yeah. So yeah, they're in the office and J- Robbie Robertson kind of walks out. And JJ kind of realises, oh no, the papers that I had were gone. And then that's when he clicks it. The comedian was in the building the whole time. Taps on that shield pin. Yeah. And then they're like, oh my God, let's find out this person. And JJ's like, he's disguised Robbie Robertson. And of course. Like, you just know. <laughs> you just know like chameleon as soon as you see like chameleon like ducks out of the way and then Robbie Robertson is like his own goddamn business I hope there's no giant Russian men attacking me for no reason this week (laughs) but there are so the agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. kind of just run in and they tackle the real Robbie who's like what the he's actually getting fucked over by Russians all the time (laughs) every time he got fucked over by Craven And he's getting <laughs> fucked over by Chameleon. Yeah. They, they don't say he's Russian in this, yeah. but, I mean, Chameleon's Russian. Yeah. Spoilers. It's like one family are just fucking his life up. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we'll it's get like a Robertson, it. like, um, craving off feud. But he gets fucked over again. Yeah, he gets he? fucked over again. Because he's, get, he's getting dogpiled by, like, fucking like, shield yeah. agents who beating the shit out of him. Like, I was kind of worried from, like, a Black Lives Matter movie that just shoot him dead on the spot. 
Oh no. <laughs> it's like beating him with like night oh, There's some really weird race stuff that's coming up with comedian. <laughs> like he's like yeah. it's like cultural appropriation yeah. and you know, he's taking on he's like Scarlett Johansson. Yeah. You know, he's like taking all these all these roles and being like, Well, what's the issue? I yeah. can play anyone. Yeah. He's auditioning for Ghost in the Shell. Yeah, I can, I can play a tree. It's fine. Yeah. It's a tree, a yeah. trans person, a, yeah. a black guy. It's all the same. All the same to me, yeah. yeah. He was in like um, Ridley Scott's version of Exodus, which got panned for its whitewashing. The original <laughs> yeah. Prince of Persia. Yeah. But I, I think Chameleon has more of a leg to stand on because he can literally turn into yeah. another person. He's not putting on like shoe polish or anything like that. Yeah, why don't he just, just like say, I can look like Vin Diesel... And I can look like Dwayne The Rock Johnson. You don't need to hire either of those people for the Fast and Furious franchise. Because they're not going to bring camera at the same time anyway. Yeah, and it's just like, well, how about this? They get like, you know, a million per week yeah. for, for coming onto set. I'll do it for 500,000. Yeah. And then I'll just be muscular. Yeah, it'll just like bulk up a little bit. It'd be easier to do Vin Diesel. You could just, like, replace Vin Diesel. Like, because anyway. you don't have to be, like, a really strong actor. You just go, uh, You don't have to be, like, coherent or, like, yeah. tra- like literate. You can just get, like, a bear or a gorilla to do it. Yeah. <laughs> Although, I, part of me thinks that there's something special about Vin Diesel that no one can really capture. Like, that, like, shaved Bigfoot, like, persona he brings well, to the screen. Well, uh, the thing is, you haven't seen... You need to see Fast and Furious 8. A.K.A. Um, the, fate of the, the Fate of the Furious. Because there's some weird shit in that. I don't... Isn't the plot that, like, he has to kind of go rogue and, like, no yeah, one knows he's he gone goes rogue. rogue, so he's, like, his prime Vin Diesel material. Because <laughs> he goes... He acts. Like, he oh, acts no. the shit. And he's, like, there's a lot of him screaming. Oh, no. It's the best bit of that movie. It sounds but... like a... I don't want to see Vin Diesel acting. That seems like it would be painful just to look at. I mean, the comedian kind of looks like... Like a more pale version of him. Yeah, a yeah. skinnier version, maybe. Yeah. I mean, if you think about it, like... I mean, we haven't even talked about this, really, what a comedian looks like. Yeah, he, he kind of looks like... He's always, like, wearing, like, power suit on. He's, like, got weird cat eyes, and he's very pale. And he's got, like, slits for, for like, nostrils. Yeah. Like a snake. He looks he's like, like, Voldemort. He looks like Voldemort, exactly. Yeah. But, like, Voldemort dressed up, like... In Falcon, almost. <laughs> it looks like a mix between what Captain Falcon would wear and what Grace Jones would wear. <laughs> <laughs> You know? It's like really like flamboyant, huge shoulder pads, purple, you know, this huge glowy belt thing. It's, it's, yeah. It's, it's very extra. and It's extremely the, 90s. It's weird as well because he doesn't look like that in the comics. No. So it's just a, it's a pure, like, this show's design and it's kind of great. It's fantastic. Especially since this whole thing is being, like, the master of disguise and I can blend in anywhere. But his actual regular appearance is the most glaring yeah. thing. <laughs> He can't change his face, but no. he could like put a hat on or or just wear like a pair of a, sunglasses. Wear a hoodie. He a could, fake nose. Even. He could just look like um, Jamie Foxx's Electro, just like put a hoodie on and yeah. just be a bit, have a bit of a weird yeah. like glowy face. And that'd be fine. Like in New York City, they probably have that like every other third person. So Robbie Robinson, long story short, is getting fucked up, and he's like been attacked. He gets jumped. He gets, he gets <laughs> jumped. <laughs> There's no idea what's going on. He's like, what's happening? As someone like wrenches his arm behind his back. Yeah. Kicks him while he's down. Is, and this, it's, where, yeah. is this where Spider-Man comes in? Comes in and he's like, oh my God, stop beating him. It's not the real Robbie. And he says, my spider sense didn't go off, so that must be the real guy. Yeah. They don't really listen to him, and Fury's like, what the fuck is this asshole doing here? Yeah, he's watching on the camera from yeah. his playing chair, like, why is Spider-Man here? Yeah. And he's like, shoot this motherfucker. And she does, and he's like, jumping out of the way. And that's then, and she notices, hold on a second, he's got like, the weird belt on. But it's kind of space, like, the only level of foresight that anyone has in this episode, because no one, like, looks for it. Fox yeah. Like. It's great. Yeah, it's just, it's the most obvious thing. And you yeah. think, obviously, like, as a viewer, it's like, you can yeah. tell. Yeah. But it also removes the whole, we can't trust anyone, yeah. because... The, it's this, blindingly obvious. Greg is just stood there, like, well, hey, Greg, you've got this new giant glowing belt thing. That's pretty cool. Yeah, man, I got it from H&M. Do you like it? Yeah. <laughs> oh, like, Greg... Always with his weird fashion choices. What are we going to do with him next? <laughs> oh, look at Greg. He's trying to get into that UN building. Why is he trying to do that? What's he doing, Greg? He's carrying dynamite. <laughs> anyway, so um, the creator is walking through the Beagle offices, and he changes into Glory Grant. But he does this in front of S.H.I.E.L.D. agents, who are like, Hey, yeah. what are you doing? And he kind of runs away from them, and they tell him, Okay, guys, he's dressed as Glory Grant. And he heads to the staircase, where Spider-Man and Kong comes in and whips him up. Yeah, I immediately gets him. Yeah. They make some like shit crack about yeah. I don't pick up straight women usually. Oh, ha 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 ha. Yeah. And nobody laughs. That's and he great. gets gassed in the face. Yeah. For his troubles. 
Yeah, that's the only gas that happens in that joke. Anyway, yeah, he escapes and changes into Peter Parker oh, as yeah. he leaves the building. And this is when Peter Parker, who is secretly the comedian, wants us to marry Jane. Which is, this is a, I mean, oh, maybe we'll go into this later, but this is a weird way I didn't expect this to go. Well, I, I kind of did, but... Kind of, yeah, I kind of thought, yeah, this is going to have a He's going to be a huge dick. She's like, hey, can you come to my recital later? Yeah. So, or not recital, but uh, I, I'm in a play later. Do you want to come? It ends up being worse with Peter Parker had he been a dick. Yeah, but then he, he just like sees these S.H.I.E.L.D. agents coming and okay, I need this as a cover, goes for it it's and like, makes out with her. Yeah. Which is, is, a weird, is a weird thing when you really think about it. Yeah. But then also kind of, she kind of goes with it. Yeah. And then when she asked him what he did, he was like, I just took a chance that yeah. Peter Parker was the luckiest guy in the world. world. Which I think is kind of great. Because you know Peter has no idea about any of this. Yeah, and, and also it's, on the one hand, you can kind of see it from his point of view of like, well, let's just hope that Peter Parker's just got something going on with yeah. this beautiful woman. Yeah. But then also funny because he's the most unlucky guy in the yeah. fucking world. <laughs> he finally got the girl of his dreams, but he wasn't actually the, the guy of his dreams. Yeah, you know this is going to fuck him over later. You just yeah. know that. Yeah, she, she invites him to um, her like Shakespeare play. She stayed in the seat. It's really cute. It would be a really nice moment for Peter Parker if it was actually Peter Parker. And he escapes. Cut to night. We're at the Bugle again. It's the day of the party. Night of the party, even. And the comedian's kind of like ziplining into the Bugle building. In a new uniform as well. Yeah, it's like a weird, like, almost like Black Panther kind of going on. Yeah, you know, uh, a little bit like Prowler or yeah, something. Was, yeah, Prowler. yeah he, he actually like didn't... When I first saw him, I, d- I didn't think it was a comedian. I th- and then someone says, oh, it's a comedian. I'm like, oh, but they're wrong because it's someone else. And then it turns out it's just a comedian. He's just got a new... I guess he realised that his like whole purple get-up is a bit obvious. It's a bit distracting. Yeah, especially at night. Yeah. He's gonna like, sh- like, like, he's gonna look like a fucking lamp just walking around. Yeah, he kind of breaks into the window and like, what I find funny is here is that no one seems to have seen this coming. Yeah. Everyone like, in is like, damn it, how'd he get in? <laughs> yeah, I guess it's one of those things that he can, he can break in as brazen as he wants to because yeah. once he's actually in and he blends in, then it's... Yeah, he doesn't have to have it. any kind of finesse or subtlety. The redhead agent, he's one of the main agents for S.H.I.E.L.D., kind of flies over and like, alerts everyone that Comedian is in the house. At this point, Spider-Man's kind of like standing on a building like later on, and he's complaining to like Bruce, who is a gargoyle, that he's talking to in this episode. Yeah, because oh, of course, I like it. Yeah, sure, why not? And he swings in after the Comedian through the hole he's made, and he's like, what are you doing? And the Comedian just smoke bombs him again. Yeah. <laughs> and it allows um, Comedian to assume on Spider-Man's identity. So it was like, to Spider-Man, effectively. And he kind of runs to these shield agents like, oh my god, he's dressed as Spider-Man. And then he throws him another smoke bomb and then leaves. And then, like, Spider-Man runs after him and realises that he's about to get fucked up. They like, attack him and he's like, no, I'm the real Spider-Man. And it has to web them all up. So back at S.H.I.E.L.D., the red Hat agent kind of says, okay, we fucked up almost immediately. Fury is like, okay, get everyone to the roof. I'll be there in ten minutes. But at that point, we kind of have a comedian. We cut back to him and he's out in the basement of the Bugle. He goes to cut off the gas. Oh, yeah, this is a weird, weird moment. Weird tangent. And it's a really, really sad moment for a French chef who's just trying to cook a steak. I'm, I'm going to cut in just dialogue on this guy because his voice acting is just like <laughs> off the charts. Weird. He had like one line in French. He's like, I'm going to fucking knock this out of the park, man. It's incredible. Oh, <laughs> So, yeah, he's devastated, this French chef. And he kind of calls his maintenance man, who's like, okay, okay, I'll go check it out. And he checks it out, and he's like, okay, he gets to turn the gas back on, and we cut back to the kitchen. And they're all, like, applaud. They're, they're, like, so crowded happy. around the stove. Like, they're trying <laughs> to... the fire. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, they're, like, cavemen trying to discover fire. Like, <laughs> oh, my God, yay! <laughs> ça bien, ça bien! Salut! And, um... <laughs> So that's all like safe. The steaks can be cooked in time. And as the maintenance man leaves, he gets to choke the fuck out with the chameleon, who then assumes his identity. And then he heads up to the stairs to the party. That's when like, all the agents and everything show up to the party, and Peter's spider sense goes off, which means he knows that the chameleon's also in the house. The group move away from the party, the VIPs plus agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. He kind of goes up to the roof as Spider Man, and he realizes that, hey, Nick Fury's here. But he realizes also that the Nick Fury that he knows has the eye patch on the left eye, but this one has an eye patch on the right. Yeah. At this point, well, Spider-Man swings in and immediately attacks him. Does that thing where he, like, 
tries to explain what he's doing, yeah. but like leaves out like key information yeah. for ages. So he's like, no, wait, you don't understand. understand. I have information to give you. You should really hear me out, guys. Yeah. And he, meanwhile, all these shield agents are attacking him. They, they like dog pile on him. He's immediately arrested. Yeah. It's really funny. <laughs> and then uh, the, the agent herself, like who's like, what? She's written down as Agent X. Or but, Agent 1. But they definitely refer to her as Agent 1 as yeah. well. So anyway, she's... She kind of goes over to this Nick Fury. You think there's going to be this realisation moment, but she's looking at... Like dead this... in the face of this person she's worked with for presumably years. And she looks at him for ages and you think, oh, she's going to figure out last minute. And then she gets a little call from Nick Fury mm-hmm. being like, oh, I'll be there in five mm-hmm. minutes. And it's only then that she gets like, Oh shit, it's not him. <laughs> and Spider-Man's like, yeah, like, that's all I've been saying. Fake Nick Fury, fake Fury kind of gets into his helicopter and tries to fly away. But Agent One shoots at the helicopter and it kind of crashes into the sea. And then JJ, who's been on the roof this whole time, is like, oh yeah, how did he, like, how did the comedian fuck up so badly? And Spider Man kind of like takes the time out of his day to go, it's because you're shit at journalism. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's because you, you, you did the wrong photo in the obituary yeah. of him in the first place and that's where he got the photo. Yeah. Which is a, it's a good detail. Yeah. Funnily enough, what happened in the marketing for Far From Home, where they put the eye patch on the wrong side of Fury for some reason. Do you think it was on purpose? Well, I mean, the whole time I thought they were, because I thought they were setting up comedian, yeah, yeah. but then there was nothing in there. Well, the Wikipedia, for some reason, has Newman a car down as Dimitri is, slash the comedian. is the comedian, even though there's, there's no, no indication whatsoever. There's no it. confirmation, it's just... I kind of want to believe, like, X-Files style, that this is all coming towards something, but that's a whole other kettle of fish. Yeah, well, we, we talk about the chameleon Far From Home shit a lot in our post-credits freak yeah. out. Which you should go listen to after you listen to this, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. All before. All before. Well, it's probably too late now. You're if not you've already listened to it, listen to it again. again. Exactly. There's no, never too many times, honestly. Back on this episode, um, we're at the UN, and the treaties being some of the diplomats... Who, who are these countries, by the way? I don't these two really diplomats, know. like yeah, this uh, historic peace treaty. Yeah. They're yeah. gonna shake hands. You, but... you assume because of the time, it's probably in the Balkans somewhere. Maybe it's like Latveria and yeah. uh, Genosha, or just yeah. some made-up Marvel shit. Yeah, it's actually it's actually Magneto and and uh, Doctor <laughs> Doom that are shaking hands, and just no one they no just one's decided not it. to focus on it. Yeah, that's fine. But yeah, they're in the um, UN, and then Robbie Robertson is next to JJ, and like, oh my god, I can't believe I'm here. And look over, and who sits next to them but Peter Parker? JJ Riley is like, how the fuck did you get in here? And then Peter Parker says something along the lines of like, oh, I'm a freelance journalist. I do whatever I can to get my scoop. And you see him like kind of focusing in. And he repeats a line, right, about like, because earlier when he was trying to convince JJ to like let him go to the pie and take photos of them, he says, oh, I only need one shot to get the Pulitzer Prize or whatever. Yeah. And then... He kind of says, yeah, oh, that needs one shot. I will not miss my chance to blow. This opportunity comes once in a lifetime. And he loses himself in the music in the moment. But not before. <laughs> Spider-Man swings in to kick the fuck out of him. And he's like, what the fuck are you doing? And then you see like a really cool image of Peter Parker and Spider-Man duking it out. He also misses his shot, but this camera is like this ridiculous cannon. It wasn't yeah. like a, a bullet. Yeah. It was like a laser that's like... Massive. I, I don't know. It's like it's how ridiculous. did he not smuggle this into the UN? Yeah. <laughs> also, why it. why would he not just go for something more discreet? Yeah. Like a massive laser that blows up everything. <laughs> you got to like a, a little poison dart, a silenced bullet. Nope. Full ass laser because the comedian does not fuck around. <laughs> <laughs> He's Grace Jones flamboyant. Conversely, why does how does Spider Man get into the UN? How does he just swing into the UN? I guess they don't have like security on the skylight. It's like who's gonna swing in? I mean, like, yeah, I guess none of the security swing proof, is it? Yeah. But yeah, so... Um, Maybe he just ran through and everyone's yeah. like, Shit. no, stop him. Stop. Oh, no. He, he ran through like the kid at the end of Love Actually. <laughs> just like running through that... Airport that, security. Yeah, that non-existent security. Which is weird, because that movie's post-9-11. Yeah. And it's like, well, that would not happen. Actually, kid would be shot dead on the spot. Yeah, that's one of those movies I was so certain it was pre-9-11 just no. because of that scene. Yeah. So there's and no way you could have done that. It's like, not even that. It's like 2003 or something. It's like, they've had time to think about it and yeah. film that scene with yeah. the context of 9-11 in their minds. And I'm going, yeah. that's probably fine. I think they decided not to shoot the scene where he, he just gets like shot down <laughs> by the police. <Yeah. laughs> it's terrorism, actually. Yeah. 
Okay, so... He runs onto the plane and it explodes. <laughs> and then Liam Neeson's like, yes, my plan is complete. <laughs> it's sounds like he's working for League of Shadows this entire time. Yeah. And this is a prequel to Batman Begins. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, Spider-Man and Peter Parker are fighting. It's really, like, intense. And then... He punches him in the dick. Yeah, he punches him right in the dick. He punches him in the crotch. The crotch little camera. <laughs> the crotch cam. Right in the crotch cam. Yeah, crotch cam. Fisted. Getting too many episode titles for this. Yeah. <laughs> Comedian crotch cam. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, Spider-Man punches Peter Parker right in the dick. In the dick. In the dick. I'll cut in some poor red dick. <laughs> he puts his dick in. You gonna take that dick, huh? I'm gonna pop off a piece of my dick. Oh yeah, I'm fixin' to fuck you. I don't fuck you. I'm going to get it all up in your vage. Get it up in your vage with my dick. With my dick. Going to put it in with my dick. I'm going to put my dick in. I'm going to put my dick in. What's up, man? Hey, you man. Right? What's up? <laughs> so it makes sense in the context. I'm going to have to cut it in. It's <laughs> <so> crazy. <laughs> So yeah, like, dick punch happens. Chameleon gets fried because that thing just blows the fuck up. And he's kind of like transformed between like different characters. He's um, captured over time. So he's like, one time he's Robbie Robertson. He's Peter Parker. He's JJ. He's Glory Grant. He fits between them. Nick Fury at one point. And he's getting shot all the way through this. He's, he's probably dead. And then he kind of faints because he's been shot with several lots of electricity. Which has to hurt. So he's taken away. The day is saved. And Spider-Man is back outside kind of having his whole bad luck thing. He complains to Bruce Garvey all the no one appreciates me, Bruce. So this gargoyle who says nothing because it's a gargoyle. Go- gargoyle? Yeah. So he kind of complains and... Hobgoblin. Uh, Hobgoblin. Ugh, fuck's sake. Bugga-bugga-bugga-bugga-bugga-bugga-bugga-bugga-bugga-bugga-bugga-bugga-bugga-bugga-bugga-bugga-bugga-bugga-bugga-bugga-bugga-bugga-bugga-bugga-bugga
yeah. all the story beats kind of like played out like as they should have and like we got a little bit of Peter Parker as well and all of that he didn't like learn a but, lesson but he just got some bullshit which yeah is it's, weird. it's a weird note to end it's not like a bad note to end the season yeah. on or anything it's just like oh we're just gonna end on this random episode it could have easily been a, a first episode of the season it almost makes more sense of that I'm yeah like, we're starting a new season here's a new villain one and done and it might have been like move from season two to season one for some reason and you can see that happening for sure I think I've seen this I, I've, this is one of those episodes that I remember more clearly yeah or at least I don't remember it clearly I would just remember being a kid and watching Chameleon thinking he was a cool villain or, so I, I don't know if this got a lot of reruns or something like that oh or it got pl- I'm sure I watched things out of order as well I never did this episode before have you not no there was a lot about it I didn't remember but I do remember the whole like of him taking on taking on different identities and that kind of thing but yeah, I definitely think yeah, like it would be a good first episode for season two. But speaking of first episodes, this was that like where did the um, comic origins come into all this. Previously on Spider-Man, Chameleon's actually the very first supervillain that yeah. he faces. You know, fantastic. In the very first issue of the Amazing Spider-Man, obviously you got Amazing Fantasy fifteen, where you actually get the Spider-Man origin. Then you get his official series, which is known for the front cover being him. And the Fantastic Four. Yeah. So you think with the Chameleon, you'd assume that maybe Fantastic Four end up fighting Spider-Man because the Chameleon frames him or something. Turns out they they are both in the same issue, but it's just like not really related. Oh uh, right. So also for something like I think it's only the first two issues. There's effectively two stories. All right. So the first story is very much just setting up Spider-Man. The very first line is Uncle Ben is dead. <laughs> Wow. So bit of an up ending, up beginning. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Um, so he just Dives in. it's just him going. Ah, oh, remember when my origin happened? And uh, then uh, finding out that uh, Aunt May can't afford the rent, and then he's like, I gotta get a job. And then there's this whole weird thing where he like he's like, I'll put on a show. He gets a booking agent, and then he does it and, like shows off his skills. Yeah. And then the guy goes to pay him. And he's like, Make the check out to Spider Man. The guy's like, okay, that won't work. And he's like, <laughs> I don't care. And then he grabs the check and he goes to the bank. And the funniest thing, though, is that the bank teller's not like, Spider-Man isn't a name. <laughs> you can't come it's... in as an alter ego. That doesn't make sense. Yeah. You have to put it into a real account. You don't just give some a check to the bank and then say, give me money. But then what the bank teller actually says is, I can't ID you as Spider-Man. And the Spider-Man's like, well, look at me, I'm wearing a costume, I'm Spider-Man. And he's like, well, that could be anyone in the costume. Yeah. And that's his reasoning, <laughs> which is a bit weird. It's a bit stupid. Yeah. Then you get JJ introduced. John Jameson is doing a test flight, and then the test flight goes wrong. Spider-Man saves him. JJ still blames him for it all. Yeah. And that's that first wow. story. The second part of it starts off with Peter Palmer. Peter Palmer? Yeah, because they've made a mistake. <laughs> In, this, in the very first issue, they get caught in front of They fucked his name wrong. Yeah. yeah. And they do it a few times. And then I think in a later issue column, like someone's like, yeah, why do you keep calling him Peter Palmer? And then Stanley replies, I can't remember the exact response, but he had a really funny response where he's just like, yeah, we fucked up, sorry. <laughs> uh, but yeah, anyway, Peter Palmer. Peter Palmer. Uh, he goes to, uh, everyone hates him and he has no money, as usual. Oh, classic Peter Palmer. Yeah. So he heads to the Fantastic Four. He, he breaks in, and then the thing, like, immediately, like, who the fuck is this punk? And starts trying to fight him. And then wow. the entire Fantastic Four start trying to capture him. Yeah. And he's just dodging around and stuff. Why, the whole time, they're like, wait, why are you here? What's going on? Why are we fighting? And eventually, Reed Richards stops the whole thing. Uh, Mr. Fat House 6 stops the whole thing. And he says, why are you here? And so I was like, I want to join the team. How much do I get paid? And then they're like, we're a non-profit organisation. <laughs> he's like, oh, and he's shucks. Like, yeah, they're like, we got some unpaid internships. Or whatever. <laughs> and then, is travel like covered? And then they're like, no. And then uh, the first thing he does is he'll, as well, is that invisible woman like makes a mistake of, of going like, hey, aren't you like wanted by the police? Like, aren't you like a fugitive? Yeah. And and then he's like, oh, you guys are all like the rest. Fuck you guys. And, like, and leaves. And that's actually pretty much every Spider-Man encounter with superheroes during those early years is that Mm -hmm. of him being a bit of a loner and hanging out with them and wanting to be a part of them, but then 
Not they're really like, advanced. they're like, who are you? And then he kind of gets a bit resentful. It's like, fuck you guys and leaves. And then they're like, oh, we kind of liked him actually, but yeah. he thinks they hate him. Yeah. So he never ends up having any friends. He's a bit insecure so Yeah. So that's just like the first few pages. So the Fantastic Four just turn up for that. And then the it's... story actually starts. Oh, wow. With uh, the chameleon, who kind of looks a bit different in this. Okay. Yeah. Chameleon, better known as Dmitry Smerdyakov. Smerdyakov. You know, he doesn't have powers, doesn't have tech okay. to shape change. Okay. In this, he's just a master of disguise. Right. right? So he just, he wears latex masks and, like, Scooby-Doo shit. It's like some, I like, must say Mission Impossible, that also. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. He, he does a lot of that, and he has methods of doing it, and he's really good at it, and he can alter, he, like, alters his voice, and he does, he impersonates people really well. He's got lots but of that's like, what sprinting and stuff. Huh? So he, does, he does, like, sprinting around as well. I don't get it. Because he's Tom Cruise from Mission Impossible. Oh, okay. I feel like we moved on from M- Mission Impossible, so I got really confused. I wanted to bring it back for yeah. no reason. Yeah. <laughs> you were just sat about it for that time period being like, shit, shit, Mission okay, Impossible. Okay, 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 okay. Um, and it was sadly out of date. Anyway, yeah, after so I derailed you for like no reason. <laughs> <laughs> the way he looks in this, he kind of has a similar look where it's like the white head. Yeah. But it's not like skin. It's weird. It's like an under mask thing so he kind of looks like he's got a mannequin head or something <laughs> yeah you know and he wears like goggles on top of him for some reason of course of course yeah he looks kind of cool actually uh, i'll show you a photo Ooh, yeah that's actually look not as bad as it really should do yeah he looks kind of cool actually yeah. but he's just got this kind of mask thing over his face and then he puts the mask over the mask I guess later because it's probably like really like tough on the skin yeah it's kind of a cool design but he basically, he's introduced, he's just uh, going to a military base and yeah. stealing, like, secrets and shit. Classic um, Cold War shit. To sell, yeah, exactly. And he even says to sell to the Iron Curtain countries, uh, is what he says. He's just watching TV and he sees Spider-Man was reported to be going into the Baxter building to see the Fantastic Four. So yeah. he's like, okay, I've got an idea. I'm going to use this guy as a full guy. He's going to frame him. And then he says this is this is a weird thing. We get some weird stuff with spider sense. Oh uh, yeah. Bear in mind this is the first issue. Some of his powers and stuff aren't a hundred percent defined yet. Okay. I don't think they even say spider sense as a term no. in this, but they use alternate versions of it. But basically he says Spider Man has the powers and instincts of a spider. So I will send him a message that only his spider senses will be able to pick up. Ooh. And he just gets out like a radio transmitter and just transmits I don't know how he knows that Spider-Man has senses. Sure, yeah. And, like... I, and I don't know how he knows how to find the frequency for this, but anyway, he transmits a message to Peter Parker's, oh, oh Peter Palmer's brain. Yeah. Uh, saying, like... He's got, like, spider mail. Yeah, exactly. And he just, like, sends him a message or whatever, yeah. saying, like, meet me on this building at 10pm. He then breaks into the building, steals missile defense plans, dressed as Spider-Man, he brings a gun that shoots like a shit version of Spider-Man's webbing. Uh, and just like webs up a guy, makes sure he's seen a Spider-Man, grabs the defense plans, runs to the roof, gets in a helicopter, leaves just before Spider-Man arrives. At the scene. And then he arrives like, yeah, where's this guy? And then immediately the police come in, just start trying to shoot him <laughs> and fuck him up. And yeah. he's like, what the fuck? I'm going to get out of here. This is a shared thing, chameleon... Uh, in this and the show seem to love helicopters. <laughs> <laughs> he really does. <laughs> he spends as much time in helicopters as he does in disguises. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> so when webs up these cars, he thinks, okay, I saw a helicopter leave. He immediately deduces exactly what happened somehow. Then he uses his spider senses to, air quotes, tune in yeah. to where the helicopter is and then follows his spider sense to find the helicopter. Yeah which is now flown miles away to the waterfront. Yeah. And he chases it down. He finds a motorboat. He gets in the motorboat and he follows the helicopter out to sea. Yeah. He sees this helicopter is heading towards a Soviet submarine. <laughs> well, at least it's a submarine unidentified except for with a hammer and sickle. Ah, uh, communism. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This comes up again because... He webs the hatch closed on the submarine, so yeah. then they're like, we've been rambled, and then they, they cheese it, uh, and then... <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Cheese it. They cheese it? Yeah. Like, it? like, 
They run away. They leg it. Yeah, they leg it. Oh, they, the they made like a banana and leaf. Yes, exactly. Uh, they made like a cheese and leaf. Anyway, <laughs> he, he jumps onto the helicopter. He rips the door off. Camellia's like, what the fuck? And then Spider-Man says, end of the line for you, commie. <laughs> there it is. Just to drive it home. And then the next panel is them... The helicopter landed on the same building as before, <laughs> so I think he just like, like makes, took off. He just makes chameleon like, like fly the helicopter <laughs> all the way back. It's like back where you found it. Yeah, and then uh, and the, the way they say it as well, it's like the security guards are still there because it's happened so fast. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so they're still there. It makes him apologize to security guards. Yeah, he, literally, he like he walks around and he's like, "Look, what do you say? This is the chameleon. He's wearing Spider-Man costume under." Under this, it was him this whole time. But then, of course, what do you think Chameleon does? He transforms into one of the police cards. No, he drops a smoke bomb. Oh, yeah. His he other, loves, like, penchant. He loves helicopters and smoke, smoke bombs. bombs. So he drops the smoke screen. He runs inside. Police and Spider-Man running after him. Spider-Man, like, his sense goes off and he realises that one of the policemen is Chameleon yeah. now. So he goes after him, but Chameleon turns the lights off. Uh, he turns the lights on like a like a Poirot novel. Yeah, exactly. And then the lights get turned back on, and Spider-Man's like fighting with a police officer, and then the police, uh, and then Chameleon as the police officer. It's so hard to say. Yeah. <laughs> he starts going, "Look, it's it's Chameleon. Chameleon. He's dressed as Spider-Man <laughs> again." So then they all start beating on <laughs> Spider-Man, and Spider-Man basically then is like, "No, you got it wrong." But he's getting like attacked by police, so he just jumps out of the window. Yeah. And then leaves. He's just like gone. Gets because, out yeah, because at this point the police just go, Oh wait, in a scuffle, this guy's police uniform was torn. Yeah. And we can see a Spider Man suit under it, so we're like, Oh, this guy is the chameleon. Yeah. Uh, but Spider Man's already gone. Then literally Spider Man runs home crying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean <laughs> he literally says the lines are like, nothing turns out right. I wish I'd never gotten my superpowers, like, yeah. as he walks home. But his head's in his hand and it's like, sob, sob. As well. So he's crying. Um, like, is he still a 15-year-old boy at this point? Yeah, he is. Yeah. He is. I mean, he's proper right at the start, so he's yeah. 15. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, then the issue ends on the Fantastic Four, who are just sat there wondering about Spider-Man. They're like, is yeah. he a menace? Is he cool? He's obviously a teenager. I wonder what it would be like when he grows up, and then that's kind of just the end. Oh, wow. Question. So is the comedian just, like, wearing, like, costumes on top of costumes? Yeah, he definitely is, like, with the Spider-Man costume, because yeah. he just puts one on top, but they didn't really clarify a lot of it, so I think a lot of it is costume changes, like, quick costume changes, and the comedian does change in the future. The... Like, more than costumes, like... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he wears the same thing for the rest of the, his, his run in the Spider-Man comics. Later on, he actually gets this micro computer in like a belt, ah. which is like in the show okay. of like taking images of people and transforming that way. But like beyond this point, he he teams up with Craven a lot mm-hmm. because for those who don't know, Craven is his half brother. Yeah. Then he ends up fighting Spider Man again. He fights Daredevil, Avengers, Iron Man, the Hulk yeah. for some reason. Um, <laughs> That, that's, that's a bit of a mismatch. <laughs> yeah, then way later, there's a lot of chameleon stuff I haven't read, so this is through just general research. And I'm interested to read this, because yeah. some of this I didn't even bring up, because I was like, I'm not even sure if that's true. But basically, chameleon goes crazy, because uh, at one point there's this iconic storyline called Craven's Last Hunt, which, big, big spoilers, ends with Craven shooting himself in the face and dying. So it really was his last hunt. Yeah, literally, and uh, well, until he came back to life, because um. <laughs> <laughs> of course, um, <laughs> god damn it, chameleon. After that, he kind of loses it a bit, and he becomes obsessed with like fucking up Spider Man. He then ingests the serum, which makes his face actually featureless and like malleable, so he yeah. can actually change his face, literally, oh, wow. uh, which is this whole thing. At some point, apparently, and I didn't know this until I looked up, but he finds out that. Peter Parker is Spider-Man. Yeah. And then just tries to fuck up his life. But because he's kind of crazy, it's like, I don't think he's like... Good at it? He's not really good at it, but he does try and fuck him up. The only, like, thing I remember about, like, the comedian is, like, his death scene, which... I don't know which comic it is, 
But it kind of ends with um, the comedian saying to Peter Parker as Spider-Man, but without the mask, I love you. And then yeah. Peter just bursts into laughter. The, see, there's, there's, there's a lot of these things I haven't read. And there's a long ongoing thing with the chameleon that I think culminates in that. Yeah. But he knows who he is for a while and he's kind of nutty. Right. And I have no fucking clue about this. I actually learned about this like today. Really? So yeah. no clue how that... I know that he gets taken out like embarrassing ways and stuff. I know that like during this whole crazy part, like there's a point where like Aunt, he poses a Peter Parker and then Aunt May like knows it's not him. So she like drugs her cookies. Yeah. To knock him out, and I know uh, Mary Jane takes him out with a baseball bat yeah. at some point. They yeah. both kick his ass at some point. Yeah, I think he just goes naughty. But then the thing is that the stuff of the new comics that I know him from, he's a bit different. A lot of this stuff got reset after one more day, which uh, is the infamous resetting of everything Spider Man because Mephisto devil deal. Selling his marriage, Civil War bullshit. <laughs> confusing mess but anyway a lot of stuff got reset Mm -hmm. a lot of the people who knew who Spider-Man was now have forgotten it again and then Chameleon more recently as in like a couple of years back maybe I read a few good issues with him and they kind of made him a bit more of a threatening character Okay, and he was a bit more twisted because his whole rule at that point is that he would impersonate people but he would capture them he would like drug them he would take them back to his lair he would strap them to a chair, and then while he had them chained up, he would like assume their lives. He would, he would, no, he would make like a mold to like so he could have like the face mask, oh, and, shit. and then he would copy their their voices, mm-hmm. like so he could get the pitch right in his voice and impersonate them, and then he would drop the chair down into a like a pit of acid. Shit, that's that's, that's just, so cold. Jesus. Yeah, he would just so he'd remove all trace. Of okay, them, so like they would complete, and then he would go out dressed looking like them. He would like listen to their deaf cries to like perfect the voice, <laughs> you know. It so has to be an easier way of doing that. No, but he, he was doing it the whole time. But then he's like listening as they're dying, so he's like, right. Yeah, yeah, trying to get this is all they'll sell when they die, <laughs> yeah. And then he and then he heads out into the world as them and then does whatever he does. But then he also has this weird thing that even though he's doing stuff to steal shit or whatever his specific plans are he also while he's in someone's life he also tries to like fix their life a bit okay. which is this weird thing and then there's a whole point he really fucks up Peter Parker's life at one point because he takes on Peter Parker he dunks Peter Parker in the acid and it's like an end of an issue thing but then there's this whole thing where he like webbed himself up last minute does he know that Peter Parker's fine again? no okay. obviously Peter Parker just about gets out but then he like takes over Peter Parker's life to do his mission but while he's there he's like he runs into Peter Parker's flatmate, who he has like a bit of a tumultuous relationship with, and he decides to fix that by sleeping with the flatmate. And then okay. it works out. Like, it turned out she fancied him, and then they sleep together. And then after the whole thing's resolved, <laughs> like, P- Peter Parker has no way of like saying it was the comedian yeah. because there's, there's no way he could have survived. Yeah, and there's, he couldn't really explain the whole thing, so he just has to like be like, I guess I live in a world now where I slept with my flatmate and now she likes me, yeah. and I have to break up with her because I don't like her. <laughs> and it's like this whole thing. Oh, shit. But yeah, Chameleon's cool. Definitely not movie of his own cool, but yeah, cool. he needs to be dropped in there somewhere. It sounds a bit like the plot of Face Off, that little bit, that last part. Yeah, 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 <laughs> it is a little bit, actually. The other thing I say about comic stuff in this is... Yeah. Um, Agent 1 slash Agent X or whatever. Yeah. Weird choice. She doesn't exist in the comics, but she's like the main like S.H.I.E.L.D. agent in this episode, like working for Fury. Yeah. She's effectively... Black like, Widow. Right? Well, she's like an amalgam of like Black Widow, Sharon Carter and Maria Hill mm-hmm. kind of thing. I, I Not not really Maria Hill because Maria Hill came, it was only in like 2005. Oh, really? But yeah, she was much later, but, um, but it's, it's a kind of mix of Shield Agents. I don't know why they did that because they could have easily just dropped in. Could have picked one. Yeah, you could have p- picked one. I don't know. Maybe they didn't have rights to everything. Or uh, yeah, I don't know. True. I don't know how it works. But that's uh, that's what I got on the comics, really. Oh, nice. Oh, and then of course there's the the first issue that Chameleon has like a new costume and a belt thing that transforms himself. So also when his big grand plan is to he starts to fight with Spider-Man and then he ch- turns into an old lady. <laughs> so then everyone looks at Spider-Man and he's like wailing on this old lady. <laughs> and then everyone's like, now get him. And then they like 
the whole issue is people like chasing Spider-Man. Like he's a menace because he beat up an old lady. And at the end, Spider-Man like marches. He captures the old lady and he like marches him down and like makes him admit. Like <laughs> you tell them what you did. And he's like, I'm the comedian. I pretend to be an old lady. Yeah, and that's the whole issue. It'd be really funny if like he transformed into another person. And he just found the actual old lady and just. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like Captain Marvel a little bit. Man. Yeah, yeah, shit. I, I forgot about that for a second. But yeah, that brings us to the end of the comic book origins, I'm assuming. Mm-hmm. And it brings us to the end of this episode of the Lightning Spider-Man show. Which also brings us to the end of this season of the Lightning Spider-Man show, season one. Yeah. yeah. What do you think of this season so far? Well... I actually I... hold that thought. Because we've yeah. got a whole thing to talk about later. We want to talk through the whole season of this. So while this is the end of the episode coverage, we want to go through the whole of the show. In like one little season one recap, which you will see soon well, enough. I'd say we'll, we'll go through it. We'll review. We don't need to recap the whole thing. I'll take days. I'm sure yeah. we'll do that. But we'll have a little we'll review. We'll do that. We'll do that by ourselves. Yeah. We just won't record it. Yeah. You, you, you don't want to hear that. We don't yeah. want to show you. Don't yeah. Don't want to see that. No. It's <laughs> for the good of the world. Oh my god. But no, that brings us to the end of this episode and to the end of the season. Stay tuned. We've got a bit more for the end of, beginning of season two, which includes more weird lore. Uh-huh. and a, a review of season one. But yeah, thanks for coming with us, swing with us on this journey of spider man And we hope to see you for season two sometime. How about that, guys? See you next time, folks. Go about your lives.